Hello, love. Hello. <laughs> How are you, sausage? I'm very good. How are you? Good. How are you? Wonderful to see you. And you? What a beautiful morning. It's not bad, is it? So, we're at the Serpentine. Isn't it glorious? It's absolutely beautiful. It's rare that you get these mornings in November. It's genuinely, genuinely one of my favourite places in London and has been ever since I was a kid. So I used to walk around here, like literally there's a loop to loop and it goes all the way around. I used to stop there with my mum and get hot chocolate. It was like a lovely, gorgeous Sunday ritual. And I yeah. sort of did that in my teenage years as well. And then it's sort of become a bit of a place for me to think. Hopefully, what you do is what you love, so it's yeah. sort of percolating in your brain the whole time. It's yeah. sort of like free therapy. You, you should do stuff that you love. Yeah. And you've obviously had a long and very, very successful career. Tell, tell me a little bit about that. But I was brought up in sort of deepest, darkest Exeter, um, which is beautiful and it's a gorgeous mm. place to, to grow up. But it's quite strange being a pretty much the only sort of brown kid in rural England and it wasn't you know the worst or anything like that but you do feel like a sort of like an outsider so telly and films and stories become your um it's not even your escape I think they're your hope that was the only thing I could think of was directing films that was the only thing that I uh thought well that's going to be the thing that I love and so you did directing for, for how long for about two, three years, mm. and it was and it was that wonderful time when it, it, there was a shift in tech. I mean, not to now, but everything was becoming more possible. Mm. So, and that's been the wonderful thing about the last 15 years has been this democratization of of creating. Yep. So it's not just a, a hallowed few that get the chance to do it. Lots and lots of chat that we're in the golden age of content. Yeah. Uh, simply because of the of the amount of platforms that actually exist, and yeah. you know, there's more and more coming through. I think one of the things I read to subscribe to all of them is going to cost the, the US consumer $95 a month. There aren't that many households who are yeah. going to be paying that, if, if any, to yeah. be honest. So, well, I mean, how, how do you think about that? Well, I think it'll always, it'll always be in, in the offering. So, I mean, it's sort of the marriage of sort of the, the creative ideas and then mm. how easily you can access them. And I think what consumers and what audiences are um, benefiting from is a return to creativity. Yep. One of the things that always interested me with YouTube, and particularly from when it launched, because I was a, a sort of an a, a early adopter, and I quite liked these uh, sort of interesting people that were on it that uh, wouldn't normally be given a voice. Yep. And what I found really interesting, actually, and this isn't, I don't think this is necessarily, um, it's, not a, it's not a blanket truth, but I think we've seen it bear out is, People thinking, oh, well, we can take someone who's incredibly popular on YouTube and we can put them on a broadcaster and it works. Like, no, they work really well on YouTube and vice versa and take a broadcaster and put them on YouTube. Sure. It doesn't mean that, that it can't transfer. That's not true at all. But it, there's as much craft in YouTube, just a different type of craft, yep. than there is to broadcast. It's a, good, it's a good point. I mean, we've been really, really conscious of, from a YouTube brand perspective, of not trying to create. Netflix or yeah. any of those because it's not what it is yeah. and what it does incredibly well is give enormous voice to people who wouldn't have had a voice and then I don't know if you get a YouTube review which, which we send out weekly if you don't we should probably send it to you mm. And it's basically somebody just curates like sort of five or six things that they've spotted this week. Yeah. But you just start to see this, this, this continued divergence of, of, of interesting ideas and people yeah. and content. And like you know that in there or within those, those, those content ideas, there are um, people working in TV who are saying, right, how is this potentially going to play in a much, much bigger kind of budget type scenario? Yeah. It's not right or wrong or better or worse. No. Some people will fit different platforms. I think what's going to be really important and I think this is across the whole piece, actually. You know, we were talking earlier about how sustainable is all this new content yeah. and its creation. I cannot believe I'm about to use this word because it's so boring. <laughs> is navigation. Yep. And how we navigate audiences or how audiences are navigated and how those algorithms work. So when I sit down, whether I'm sitting down in front of YouTube or another platform, am I feeling like, oh, I just, I kind of want... I want to know, I want what I know. Mm. Uh, do I want to be pushed a little bit? Do I feel a bit excitable? You know, there could be sort of more interesting filters to put on how we navigate people around content, yep. particularly when there's such an explosion of it, because I don't, I think ultimately we all like the things that we like, but it's just the scale by which we want to be pushed into the next place. Yeah. I find that stuff weirdly interesting, not necessarily the how, I don't ever want to sit down and kind of like yeah. be told, you know, this is how the algorithm works, <laughs> uh, literally start weeping. But, uh, <laughs> but I, I, I sort of, I'm interested to know what, the, what, how, what it does to help people and audiences and what it's taking into consideration, that bit I'm interested yeah. in. And the, and the evolution, iteration of that is never 
I mean, you know, we said this is the new normal, we're just going to see this constant change. I think the way that we think about the algorithm is it's going to be constant change. So it's been wonderful sitting out here. Um, Good. But I really would love to see the gallery as well. Shall we? Can you take me to the gallery? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go for it. One of the things I really wanted to talk to you about, because uh, you've been very vocal on the subject of representation, mm. some people in the industry think that we've, we've cracked it. Yeah. I think we both agree that that's not the case. Yeah. Far just, from just it. Just a little bit, actually. yeah. Far from it. Just be good to get your, your thoughts. And the whole point about diversity is that there's equality of representation. If you park um, the need as human beings to be represented, which mm. is fundamentally quite important, yep. there is such a madness to not have equal representation. Mm -hmm. Our audience is a diverse audience. Uh, there are diverse stories. There are diverse ways in which to talk to people. And to think that one set of people can do all of that is frankly, and I will not put an expletive in there, mm -hmm. bleep ridiculous. ridiculous yeah. The lack of representation is absolutely linked to the social unrest that we see, mm -hmm. not only in our country, but around the world. Completely. Um, it's so layered. I'm not saying the solutions are easy, but if that isn't something that is at the heart of your business as something to solve, I think you are a dinosaur mm. and you will become extinct very, very shortly, is my PG-rated yeah, response. Yeah. No, I, 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 I completely agree. I, I think, you know, that, that point around the left behind, yeah. um, and I think, you know, there's a general feeling that that's a big chunk of the country now. It's not just gender, it's not just race, it's not just a social demographic, it's geography, it's, it's all of the above. It's everything. And I think as an industry, we haven't done anywhere near enough to reach out to those different areas yeah. and talk to them about what actually having a career in this industry yeah. means and yeah. looks like and how they could actually have it. What I want to be part of is a dialogue trying to get to some answers. And what I do know is that dialogue can't just be one-sided and it can't be within the industry. I think we have to woo uh, a, not just a generation, but uh, that, that diverse group of people who are woefully unrepresented to want to come and work in this industry because mm. frankly I can understand why they just go absolutely why would I want to come anywhere near that yeah. I would encourage or I would like to be part of a much more open dialogue that's that's two-way um, that that doesn't assume that we have all the answers but asks and and also to start doing it quickly There is obviously still a huge amount of value placed on TV advertising, rightly so, you know, mm -hmm. it's still incredibly powerful. Yeah. But we've seen massive proliferation across different formats and different types of advertising becoming more effective. Yeah. From a creative perspective, how, how do you think about that shift? How do you, how do you balance the two or the, the multiple? I think from a creative point of view, it's an incredibly exciting time because the number of opportunities and the number of tools that we can play with is just growing and growing. I don't see it as being one thing that gets removed and another mm. thing replaces it. Our feast, our table is just getting fuller and fuller, mm -hmm. which can only be a good thing, particularly for someone who loves food as much as I do. <laughs> um, and it's about being additive and being really smart about what's the thing you're trying to do, where are the people you're trying to talk to, and as a result, what's the thing you need to create? Mm -hmm. I think it's iterative and I think it's additive. I don't think it's going like out. It's horses for courses, knowing yep. what you're creating for who, where, when, how they're consuming it, and then make that brilliant. Whether that's a post, mm -hmm. whether that's copy alone, whether that's static, whether that's moving image, whatever it is, I think there's good and there's bad. That's sort of all I'm really interested yep. in. Is it the right idea mm. in the right place for the right audience? It's just a fascinating time to be in the industry, I guess. Can't agree more. I could chat you all day. <laughs> yeah, likewise. But I think you're going to have to get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, mate. Thanks, love. Good to see you.